Welcome to the first book review. In October, we look at the gratitude effect by Dr. John Di Martini. What John has written in his book and the topics that he addresses is mainly the power of gratitude. It's a central theme. Is that gratitude is a tool that is unlocking personal potential and success by consciously expressing gratitude for what we have. We invite more of it into our lives. And then the Martini explains that gratitude transforms negative thoughts and experiences into positive learning opportunities. It changes how we perceive challenges, encouraging growth and resilience. The book then discusses the balancing of both positive and negative aspects of life, rather than focusing solely on what is good or what is bad. Gratitude helps people see the value in all experiences. Gratitude strengthening relationships by promoting understanding, empathy, and appreciation for others. It fosters deep connections by allowing individuals to see the value in others. Di Martini also highlights the scientific benefits of gratitude, showing that grateful mindsets reduces stress, it improves mental and physical health, and promotes overall well-being. In the book, various practical examples are provided, and we will talk about those a bit later in this session. The power of gratitude is the central theme. And gratitude is a tool for unlocking personal potential and success. Gratitude is a tool for unlocking personal potential and success. By consciously expressing gratitude for what we have, we invite more of it into our lives. It amplifies abundance. Expressing gratitude daily shifts our focus from what is lacking to what we already have. Inviting more abundance into your life by recognizing the existing blessings. It increases personal magnetism. Now, what does that mean? Gratitude aligns your energy with your positivity and making more attractive opportunities, relationships, and success. It reinforces positive ha ha um, habits. The practice of gratitude creates a feedback loop where acknowledging small wins encourage positivity and continuous Di Martini also explained that gratitude transforms negative thoughts and experiences into positive learning opportunities. Negative thoughts and experience into positive learning opportunities. It changes how we perceive challenges, encouraging growth and resilience. It's far more than just say, it's not a problem, it is an opportunity. That is playing with words. But what the Martini does is he actually teaches us how to turn those negative thoughts and experiences into positive learning opportunities. 
So it transforms challenges into opportunities. Gratitude helps reframe setbacks and challenges as stepping stones for growth, making it easier to embrace obstacles and opportunities for learning. By focusing on the lessons within negative experiences, gratitude builds mental toughness and the ability to bounce back from adversity. It gives us an ability to bounce back from adversity. It builds mental adversity. It creates neural pathways, which makes it easy to bounce back and to adapt. Gratitude shifts from scarcity and fear to abundance and positivity, allowing you the potential in every situation. The book also discusses the balancing of positive and negative aspects in life, rather than just focusing on what is good or bad. Gratitude helps people to see the value in all experiences. So gratitude encourages you to see and appreciate the unique qualities and the contributions of others deepening connections, and fostering empathy. Regularly expressing gratitude in relationship builds trust, reduces conflict, and cultivates a more supportive, harmonious connection. When you show genuine appreciation to others, it often inspires them to reciprocate and to create a cycle of mutual respect and gratitude within relationships. But depending on all those highlights, the scientific benefits of gratitude, showing that grateful mindsets reduces stress, improves mental and physical health, and promotes overall well-being. Practicing gratitude lowers cortisol levels, leading to reduced stress and anxiety, which positively impacts both mental and physical health. A grateful mindset has been shown to improve immune system responses, helping the body fight off illnesses more effectively. So a regular Gratitude practices have been linked to better sleep quality, lower blood pressure, and overall sense of well-being, contributing to long-term health benefits. So, when we look at the practical exercises, and we are halfway down on the book, um, the practical exercises are eight. First of all, it's a gratitude journaling, gratitude balancing exercise, daily gratitude meditation, gratitude letters, transform negative experiences with gratitude, evening reflections, gratitude affirmations, and gratitude sharing. So, on the gratitude journaling, the purpose is to con recognize the positive aspects of your life. So each day, write down at least five things you are grateful for. They can range from small moments, beautiful sunrise, to significant achievements or relationships. The goal is to develop a habit of appreciation and awareness. So, try to focus on both positive experiences and challenging ones. 
Gratitude involves appreciating all aspects of life. Good moments. Example. I'm grateful that whilst the taxi drove in front of me, I could manage my own emotions about it and avoid. I'm grateful for that. So when we look at a gratitude balancing exercise, the purpose is really to help balance emotions by appreciating both sides of every situation. So how do I do it? When you encounter a difficult situation, list all the benefits or the lessons that have come from it. For example, if you are facing a challenge at work, ask yourself how this challenge is helping you to grow, to learn, or to develop new skills. The goal is to see hidden benefits and maintain emotional balance. So, a client terminates the relationship with you. Now, that is not good. That it's very difficult for us to accept because it's not only an income loss, but it's also a loss in trust. In that, what are the benefits? What can you learn from it? And what can you do? to improve the situation going forward. I've long, many years, had on my wall a poster that said, everybody benefits when somebody resigns. And I always thought, Yo, it's actually also, it's, it's profound, but it's also very harsh. But think about it. The person that resigns goes somewhere else where they assume that they're going to be better off. It gave, gives them opportunities for growth. Inside the organization that loses now the skill, somebody else can now step into that position, offering opportunities to that person. So the new person benefits from the skills of this employee that resigned and the existing employees now have an opportunity to grow and to be promoted. But also that person that now steps into the new position, that again for somebody else. So everybody benefits. And that is the gratitude balancing exercise. I never understood it until I read this chapter of John de Martini. So, gratitude meditation. So, the purpose is really to center your mind and to cultivate grateful mindset. Spend five to ten minutes each day meditating on gratitude. Take the time out, five minutes a day. Start by closing your eyes, taking deep breaths and focusing on things in your life that you appreciate. Visualize those people, the moments or the achievements, and feel the sense of gratitude expanding in your heart. Do that five or ten minutes a day. You don't have to burn candles and um, play fancy music. Just be quiet. Put your phone on silent. Focus. Five to ten minutes. On those people or those moments or those achievements. And you can feel a sense of gratitude expanding in your heart. There are many of them a day. 
in the life of a healthcare broker. So focus on different areas of your life during each meditation session. So what, day one, you will focus on the relationships. Day two, maybe on the work. Day three, maybe on the health. Day four, maybe on personal growth. Now, if I can, my case, what I can be grateful for, a couple of years ago, not that long ago, two years ago, I was diagnosed with hypertension, high blood pressure, and diabetes. And it's directly after COVID. And it was a problem for me. But I took certain steps. Today, I don't use cholesterol medication anymore. I use no medication for my high blood pressure. And I use 50% of the medication for my diabetes and reducing as we carry on. Now, that's an easy point that I can be grateful for. When you have exercise and you keep that on and it's done for, let's say, seven days, take a moment and spend time and be grateful for the fact that you have improved your health, but also that you stuck to your program and to your goal. But I think something that is totally lost is writing letters. So, and, and I learned it from a client of mine where she was so happy in terms of a dispute case that um, we have one for her. And she sent me a bunch of uh, gifts, socks and um, uh, puzzle to build and um, uh, wine, coffee, and rasks, and that with every item, she wrote a handwritten note, a handwritten note, not a typed document, not a document that you can uh, let your GPT write it for you. No, from your heart, your words, with the spelling errors. We've lost that skill, but it means so much. When last have you written a note to a friend, a loved one, a colleague, or a client? So write a letter or a note. It doesn't need to be 50 pages. It can be two sentences. Express why you appreciate him, what they have done for you, how they have impacted your life. You can send a letter or simply reflect on how you've, they've contributed positively to your life. Just that is enough. But be specific about the actual traits you're grateful for. Don't just say, oh, I'm so grateful for you in my life. No, I'm so grateful for what you have meant to me when you have written to me this, or when you have that to me. Because when you do that, it deepens the exercise uh, and it strengthens the relationship. Be specific. Say what it is. Then transform negative experiences with gratitude. So it is really to reframe the negative experiences as opportunities for growth. Whenever you feel upset, frustrated, or hurt by a situation, take a moment to list the things you can be grateful for because of that situation. The taxi driver drove in front of you. There's two lessons that you can learn from that. Instead of road rage. But there's two lessons. The one lesson is the fact that you can be grateful that you stopped in time. The other lesson is that you can apply that ability 
Bir bir upset, bir bir in danger, and to transform it to something that is safe. So that we can do. So for instance, if you face a loss, reflect on what you've lost, how you've become stronger because of that experience. And this exercise will help you to create a perspective and to move your perspective from a negative to a positive and to a growth mindset. The evening reflection, close the day with appreciation and reflection. Before you go to bed, reflect on your day and, and identify specific events, interactions or moments that brought joy or helped you to grow. This can be a mental exercise or a written one. I would suggest just take a small notebook and you just dot down three or four things that helped you to grow and that you are joyful for in the day. You to end the day on a positive note. Even if the day included challenges. And I can use an example. I had the day the other day. It was really, really bad. Everything went wrong. It's one of those days that you say, I want to cancel this day. But then I discuss with my seniors a certain program, a very expensive program in terms of my own mentorship that I want to embark on. And I found the funding for that program. Now, obviously, that is something that I can be grateful for and joyful. But you know what? All the bad things are left. It's not important anymore. It was so good. And so there are every single day things that you can be grateful Write it down. So pair it with the gratitude the journal, but make just quick notes in the evening. Um, you, then you can transform that into your gratitude journal. From your gratitude journal, you can use it for your meditation. From your meditation, you can write the letter. So let them all link to each other. And then I think also affirmations is important. It's to shift your mindset towards abundance and appreciation. So create a series of gratitude affirmations. And here's one example. I'm grateful for the opportunities that come my way. I appreciate the love and support I receive from others. I'm thankful for my health and my well-being. I'm a magnet for success. I attract success for me and my clients every single day. I am thankful for my health and my well-being. You can repeat these affirmations in the mornings or at times of stress and to remind you of positive aspects in your life. So a lot of value in affirmations. And the last portion is to do gratitude sharing. So the purpose is to promote a culture of gratitude within your relationships. So each day, each week, share something you are grateful for with a friend, a family member, or a colleague. Encourage them to do the same, creating a ripple effect of gratitude in your circle.
How do we greet each other? When we greet people, say, hello, how are you? And how do we respond? Okay, thank you. I've tested it. I've many times said, I'm bad. And the person says, oh, that's good. I'm also good. <laughs> Meaning they didn't listen. But why don't we change the way that we respond when we are greeted and somebody say, how are you? Then why not respond? I'm grateful. There's opportunities for growth. And I can't look forward to tomorrow when I will be more grateful. Why not do why don't we change the way that we greet each other and how we respond? So you can do this in a person, you can do it in teams, you can do it in group meetings. I don't care really how. John Martini also didn't care. But the one thing that you can do, and what about the gratitude letters? Isn't it such a good way? Of just writing to somebody, just saying it, saying it in the greetings, saying it in the responses, saying it by way of a letter. Because if you put it in your journal and when you meditate about it, you don't actually share it. So I encourage you, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from Dr. Martini's book is that we need to share our gratitude. And when you are grateful about something, you've done a great deal, you've earned some money. Why not also share it with other people? I've done it now a couple of times. When I have a good month, and actually every month, that I earn income. I share that income with somebody. I buy food and I distribute it to people. It's my way of also sharing the gratitude. Now that's one way. That's a silent way because that person doesn't know. Why are you doing that? But isn't it actually even more powerful when somebody has done something nice to share it with them? I do it often when I list things on Hello Peter. I list wrong. Oh, sure, that is also one of the purposes of Hello Peter. But you know what? Every single time that I receive good service, I also, and guess what I do? I make sure that that person about whom I comment, that that person gets a copy of that comment. Negative one, I'm not too fast about that. But the positive ones, I make sure that that person knows that I'm happy. Often, when somebody does something great, I share it with that person by sending an email and copying the superior of that person. Because I want them to know that this person is a star and that I'm grateful for that. And it has huge impact in people's lives. We are so easy to complain, but not so much to see gratitude and to share that gratitude. But one lesson that I have learned, that I am going to apply in my life, think to people, not typing, writing, using a pen and a piece of paper, and making sure that people can actually have value out of gratitude that I feel in terms of how they supported me.
Be blessed. Look out to the next book in November.